Noah, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to master parallax in After Effects. Now, if you don't know what parallax is, uh, let's take a good look at an example that I've uploaded on my channel recently. Now, parallax is essentially the movement between the foreground and the background not being tied towards each other. So what you'd think to do is, for example, if you were working in After Effects, you would have your element come down and your background go um, scale down the same amount as this to make it look like a zoom effect. But it looks a lot better when you have them differentiated by each other by having the background do less and the foreground do more. That's essentially what Parallax is, and I'm just going to hop in right into After Effects and show you kind of what I mean, and hopefully we can work together and get some get some cool Parallax stuff going on, and maybe you can take out from this tutorial more knowledge than you knew before. So let's start with the composition. Uh, I'm just going to leave these settings as they are. I'll put this on half just so the rendering is a bit quicker. Uh, you're welcome to copy these, change it, make it your own, whatever, but I'm just going to go with this. So. Essentially, what you want to do is to grab an image. Now, I'm going to grab, let's see, let's grab, let's grab this image right here. This is uh, Dust2 on CSGO. It's a CSGO map called Dust2. You might know if you play, even if you don't, you might recognize this. But essentially, we're, this is going to be our background, and I'm going to have a foreground, a uh, little bit of text. So, uh, I'm going to add some quick just stylizing effects to this. Let's give it a tint and I'm going to crank this up a bit so it's nice and bright. And we'll give this a white to background just in case it needs to be moved at all. And we're going to parent this to the background. So whenever we move this, uh, the white should move as well. So I'm going to start off by scaling this up just a tad. 115 should do the trick. And I'm actually going to move this over to the side. Actually, I'm going to move the solid just in case. So you're going to kind of see where this is going in just a bit. So, you know, it's cutting off the, the left edge a little bit, but that's all right because we're not going to be using the left edge much. But that what I just did will help with what we're doing in a minute. So. What we're gonna next add is some text. So let's do, well, let's just do text. I'm going to do axis, extra, no, do Panton. Panton is a good font, black caps. And like that, okay. So now we got our text. I'm gonna center that. If you don't have the align tab open, go to window and the line is right there. It should dock somewhere. I have it docked here. So we have our text. I'm actually going to scale this up just a little bit, and I prefer to actually scale the text size as opposed to scaling it up, just so it starts at 100 instead of starting at some random number like 149. So essentially what we're going to do is I'm not actually going to use scale. I'm going to use Z position. So if you don't know how 3D works in After Effects, then I will be making a tutorial on that soon. But Z position is essentially how close to the camera, in air quotes, there it, that the object is. So higher numbers will go backwards because that's increasing the amount of distance from the camera. And decreasing will bring it closer. So if I create this simple little animation, I'm going to make a position keyframe here just so it stops there and make it start clear back maybe 2500 negative 2500 i should say until it's off the screen completely so and if i go ahead and easy ease that keyframe and head into the graph i can't i can't use the handles on the value graph on position so i have to use motion for that but you can see we get a nice you know zoom from the screen effect now i mean ideally yes i could use scale for this but you can see how large this number will get, and if you it's if you're using something like a like a background where you don't really have the resources to be able to scale it without losing a ton of quality, then you know I prefer to just use Z position. So one thing that I just noticed with our background is we need to center the anchor point. Since I moved it over a tad, then we're actually going to need to move it over. I'm going to move the white solids background or the white solid 
uh, anchor point to the middle. I think that should, if we, if we get it close enough, it's just fine. So everything is ready to go. Now let's start adding some parallax. So you can see we have our text animation in the background is not doing anything. Let's go to where our text animation ends and let's, we're gonna use scale for this one just because Z position is just about the same thing except for, you know, like you're still losing quality if you zoom it up too much. So it's not a huge deal. So I'm gonna put this up to 180 and we're gonna do the same easy easing and keyframe and stuff that we did before. Now, if I play this slowly through, you can kind of see, now we have a bit of parallax. You can see that the background isn't moving as much as the text is. And that gives a really cool 3D dynamic effect. Let's watch that a few times. You can see, you know, it really just spices up your animations. And if we can up the ante just a little bit, let's add some shapes in the background. This is also addressing another question that I get quite a bit. How do you make those repeating shapes in the background? Well, it's a little thing called, hold on a moment, let me get the shape set up, called, well, you guessed it, repeater. So if we go to add and then repeater, it should bring it down here. I'm going to change the transform up to 175. So it's going to be 175 pixels from this one to this one and this one to this one. It's kind of hard to see just because uh, the background is white. So I'm actually going to take that off. Oops take that one off there we go so now we can actually go back in that repeater because we need to add more so I'm gonna bump this up to 25 just so we have more than we need it's better, it's better to have more than you need than less than you need or sorry not enough so if we go in and add another repeater you can see well that doesn't look very nice so let's open that up go in the transform and this position is side to side and this one is up to, up and down so you can see now we have our grid I'm going to bump that up to 18. Sure, that works. So now we can move the layer off to the side until we've covered the screen with dots. And it's good to have more than you need because if you're parallaxing to the side, then you get more of your circles and you're not running out up and down. You know, scaling isn't really that important. So I'm going to get well outside the, the boundary here just to make sure that I have enough circles. So, uh, obviously, if we scale this or position it, it's going to be scaling from there. So, once again, we need to edit to where the anchor point is. I believe it will snap to the middle. No, if I hold control, no. Okay, so uh, sometimes it doesn't snap to anything. So, you just have to zoom in with the title action safe and you know do that yourself. Title action safe you can do by hitting this button next to the zoom options and hitting that. Or you can hit, uh, sorry, quotation mark on your keyboard. That's just for Windows. I'm not sure if it's something different on Mac, but if there is, you could, you know, say that in the comments or something so other people could see. So uh, we're going to be doing the same thing with Z position as this. I mean, it is still a vector shape, so I technically could do either scale or position, but I prefer position. So we are going to keyframe that there. And you can kind of see to get the right effect, we want to make sure that this layer here with all the circles on it goes more than the background but less than the text because you can kind of see that the circles are on top of the background but underneath the text so it's got to be somewhere in between and that takes a bit of tinkering to get to get it just right so i'm going to go to negative uh oops negative 1000 and we'll use that guy and see how this looks so you can see i mean yes it is there you can easily tell the difference well, not maybe not so easily. You can tell the difference between the circles and the background, but they look like they're scaling together. So that's when you'd want to increase the amount. It's maybe negative 1500, for example. Now, if we give that a try, you can see now you're really getting parallaxy. That is looking nice. What do y'all think? If we give that a few watches over. Let's actually uh, shorten this guy and put this on that is on loop. Oops. You can kind of see we got really nice parallax effect going on here. Now the whole reason that I uh, moved this guy to the side, you can see we got a bit of a clipping going on, is we can also parallax in a different direction other than Z. We can go left and right and up and down. So I thought maybe we could do a bit of left-ish parallax 
from the left. So let's open up position on this guy. The reason I did scale on this is because, um, or the reason, yeah, the reason I did scale on this is because scale is taken and position has not been used at all yet. Although we could go ahead and separate dimensions. Uh, I think it's a bit easier to just leave it. So scale on your background is probably a lot easier. So then if you want to use position, then you can, you know, do that itself. So I'm going to start at a minute or a second and three quarters and keyframe position. I'm also going to keyframe these guys. These already have position keyframes. So what I'm actually going to do, this is not necessary. You're welcome to just use this same position, but I'm going to create parent objects for these objects just so I don't have to worry about any keyframes binding together and messing up anything. So essentially it's just, if you're familiar with Cinema 4D, this is the same thing as parenting to an object, a null object. So if we move this guy, then it moves the background and I'm not touching the Slayer at all. So let's keyframe these guys as well. Let's go into about a second layer and let's move the text over. Uh, let's move it to the right. Let's say we want for like an intro or some kind of promo, we want the logo to come in from the side or something. Like say this is their name and they've got their logo on the side here. So let's do the same thing. I moved this by approximately, what is this? Uh, 960, about 225 pixels. So let's, let's do two thirds of that. So 225 times 0.66. Let's put that in parentheses. This is just a bit of math. It's not required at all. Plus 960. So that should look just fine. You can see that the background is moving two thirds as much of the amount as the text is. Now we're going to do one third for the background. So position, let's give this guy a 225 times 0.33. Give these guys parentheses so it can do order of operations. Uh, plus 960. So it shouldn't be clipping at all. In fact, it hasn't moved much. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, move this over back towards the middle, just because we didn't really need that much buffer on that side. If you're moving it a lot, then yeah, you're going to want to have it right up against this edge so you can move it as much as possible. But we didn't really need that much space on this side for it to move. As you can see, we still have a bit of uh, background that isn't taken up. So well, let's once again do the transitions on this guy. I'm going to ease the beginning as well this time because it's not such an abrupt animation. So that should be looking just fine. See, maybe the background is just a tad too much. Let's move this guy back to this guy back to as well. Let's maybe a little bit more. Okay. It really just takes a bunch of tweaking to get it the way you'd like it, but you can kind of see, yeah, the background is moving. Yeah, the circles are moving, but not quite as much as the text because the text is the main animation, but this is just an accent around the back. So let's grab a logo. Let's go ahead and grab my logo. Well, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me find a logo for me to use. This is no endorsement or anything, but I just happen to have the Monster Cat logo laying around. Let's just use that because I have it on hand and I don't want to edit. <laughs> so let's put this at 20%. That's a good size-ish. And let's give this a color fill and just a, a dark gray, for example. We'll move this guy over. Let's say that is where it's going to end right about here. Okay. So position. We'll open that up and position for this just so we can get the times right. And that's the end. And let's just bring this guy clear out here. And ease these. Oh, geez. What did I do these on? 53%. Uh, Sorry, right, whenever I use motion, it doesn't quite tell me what percentage I used. I think I used 100 for that. No, 89. 89? Okay. So now that should be coming in from the side. You can kind of see that influences like it, it looks like it's pushing all this stuff to the side that's the what that's what i like about this now let's do just uh okay i'm actually 
going to move the text over just a little bit. This text, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's a bit too far over for me. Let's see, does that still look okay? Eh, I kind of ruined it. Move it over just a bit. Okay, a little more. All right, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> I mean, that's a bit too far over for my liking, but it's fine. So one thing that we can also do is create a bit of a line to separate these. This has nothing to do with the parallax, but it is still something that we can add to just spice it up just a tad. So I'm actually going to just create a quick little line and center that. This is this is nothing nothing final for sure. It's just so I can, you know, whiz through this tutorial. I'll put that on three and give that a trim paths crank that down to 50 and 50 and we'll animate it coming out to 100 and zero and ease those guys Oop. okay so that's our line all right that was nothing special i know if you if you want if you want to know how to do that line just kind of go back and look because this is not what this tutorial is about but what we can do is give this a bit of a parallax effect as well so you can kind of see that you know that not moving at all is a bit boring so if we go ahead and position this guy uh position there and i'm actually going to move those over and for the keyframing like the easing and stuff to work uh in correlation with these we'd want the position to start clear back when these start moving it's a bit complicated just bear with me just just pretend to pretend that I know what I'm talking about. Just move it over a bunch. Ease those guys. Let's see, what was this on? 53, I think. 53. Even if it's not, it's all right. I'm just whizzing through this quick so I can demonstrate. 89. And then we move that over. You kind of see, oh man, it looks like it's smushing it. Like it's smushing it in. See, that, that's kind of what I was talking about here. You, you can go even a bit farther with this and, you know, add lines that look like it's pushing this kind of stuff over but i'm i'm gonna stop here i think that i think i've made my point on how how this works and there's actually one more thing that i would like to do so i'm gonna add one more little bit of animation to this i'm gonna lengthen all this stuff out i'm going to make all of these a 3d layer because we're going to do some rotation Ooh, spicy okay hit r on this guy and have used okay so these nulls are only for position so we can use the layer for the circles that that was just because we had already used this so to do this we can still use that layer and also the text layer and let's see these are on the same like the line the logo and the text are all on the same foreground uh, like i don't know they, they all look like they're same difference from the camera so these would all be moving the same amount so let's see let's start at three seconds in let's give this next rotation next rotation next rotation next rotation next rotation and that's it so let's go to four and a quarter seconds and okay so these are all going to move the same let's move these negative 45 negative 35 degrees backwards all of these will go negative 35 and you can kind of see that it's clipping with the background but don't worry about that let's see uh and then negative 35. all right yeah that that could be an issue actually i'm going to go ahead and move this guy backwards just I'm gonna select these and move them back just so it doesn't clip with that because 3D layers don't like me. Okay. Oops. So let's move into here. We move these guys 35. So the circles, let's do negative 22.5. And we're still gonna have some issues with the clipping, but that's alright. And then we can move this negative 12.5. Let's actually move this a little bit less, maybe negative 19. Sure, okay. And this I'm actually gonna move back just a little bit more so the circles 
aren't clipping. You can see we still have a bit of buffer here, so we're not losing. Okay, maybe we are losing a little bit. Ah, uh, dang it. <laughs> I was hoping that that wouldn't be an issue, but let's see. Are we still losing some? Just a little bit. Oh man. Sorry, I'm I'm being really I'm being really perfectionist about this. You can kind of see the effect that we're getting. The front rotates more than the back. So let's give this a quick ease. And let's crank that to 100. Close all that up and give it a look. Oh boy. This text is not going to cooperate, is it? I am unsure on why this is not cooperating. Uh, it turns out the issue that the beginning wasn't scaling uh, was because for some reason my keyframes reset. So if we go ahead and, you know, negative 2600 ish and make that go back towards the camera, I think this was what, negative 1500? You can see, you know, that, that kind of fixes our animation. There we go. If you have that same issue, just, just know that that's the problem. I thought it was like some of these layers were clipping with each other and, you know, causing issues with the parenting and such. But it was just a simple fix, you know, that the keyframes weren't really playing nice. So, uh, yeah, that, that's that's your fix there. And we get a bit of a rotation. You can see you can do just about every attribute parallaxed from the foreground, the midground, and the background. Now, I think I've made all the points that I need to make for, for you to be able to understand how this works. If you don't, you can go back and look at any part of this video. Parallax is something that has been pretty trendy for a little while now. You know, a lot more and more people are starting to get the hang of this, and it looks really cool. I can understand why more people are doing this, because it's a very, very cool effect. So getting this kind of stuff down is pretty vital to becoming a good designer. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, please give a like to the video. That would really help me out. And if you have a friend that might find some use to this video, please go ahead and share this to them. And without any, <laughs> without any further rambling, uh, I'm going to go. You guys uh, have a great rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys in the next tutorial.